really glad to be here today. And um, I'm thankful to be afforded the opportunity to talk about Juneteenth and this meaning. And it's, it's a very meaningful, um, it's a very meaningful event. And um, I am, so I got somewhat involved because I met um, Sherry Bailey when we went down to, uh, I believe it was Charlotte, North Carolina for the Occupy Wall Street South event. That must have been like around three or four years ago. And she was there and me and her connected and we became very best friends and she is a 20 year organizer of the Juneteenth Festival in uh, Virginia. Um, so, um, in addition to me mentioning that, I'm also going to give a plug out for her because I really hope that in the future, a contingent of us from this space can go down there and support her in, in, that, in that particular area of the country. So, um, Juneteenth, also known as Juneteenth Independence Day or Freedom Day, is a holiday commem that commemorates, commemora commemorates the June 19, 1865 announcement of the abolition of slavery in Texas, and more generally, the emancipation of African American slaves throughout the Confederate South. It is celebrated on June 19th. Juneteenth itself, that word, is a combination of the word June and 19th. Holiday is observed in primarily local state celebrations. During the American Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation on September 22, 1862. It was to become law on January 1, 1863. It declared all slaves to be free in the Confederate States of America in rebellion, not those states in Union hands. This excluded the five states known as border states, Kentucky, Maryland, Delaware, and Missouri, and those countries those counties of Virginia soon to form the state of West Virginia. Also, three zones under occupation, the state of Tennessee, Lower Louisiana, and Southeast Virginia. The state of Texas, somewhat isolated and not in battle, its slaves were not affected by the proclamation unless they escaped. Because news of the end of the war moved so slowly, the news did not reach Texas until May of 1865. The Army of the Trans-Mississippi did not surrender until June 12th. On June 18th, June 18th, Union General Gordon Granger arrived on Galveston Island with 200 federal troops to occupy Texas on behalf of the federal government. And on June 19th, he read aloud the contents of the general order number three, announcing the total emancipation of the slaves. Um, skipping ahead, in the early 20th century, economic and political forces contributed to last Juneteenth celebrations. From 1890 to 1908, Texas and all former Confederate states passed new laws to disenfranchise blacks. These laws barred blacks from voting or participating in the political process. And another ugly remnant of this time were the Jim Crow laws. Also, the Great Depression, which forced many blacks to migrate north, and some of them took Juneteenth with them. There is a movement in this country to make Juneteenth a national holiday. Clergy groups in Louisiana, Paul Herring, naming one, chairman of the Juneteenth National Committee. In the 1980s, Mrs. E. Hill Delaney of Flint, Michigan, all right, championed Juneteenth in her town. Juneteenth celebrations are now in New York, Maine, Buffalo, and other states. And my friend Sherry Bailey has organized the Juneteenth festivals in Norfolk, Virginia for the past 20 years. Norfolk and the Hampton Roads are an area rich in history and also is a stop on the Underground Railroad. Organizations such as the National Juneteenth Observance Foundation are working toward gaining congressional approval to designate Juneteenth as a National Day of Observance. I, enc I encourage all of us to remember and celebrate as an African and as an African American. I know that freedom continues to be an enduring battle in so many ways and I want to always remember my ancestors. And then um, I just have some notes here. Um, 2019, I just, I spoke to her before, um, about an hour ago, because I know it's the uh, 400th anniversary, and she said it's the 40th, 400th anniversary of the first group of Africans landing in Fort Monroe in 1619, okay? And also, um, 
my friend Sherry Bailey, who I keep mentioning, uh, is starting a radio station down in Virginia. It is called WJVA.org, and they just got their 100, 100 watt transmitter today. So I'm very happy about that. And I think that her position and what she's been doing is going to resonate throughout this country. And um, I also want to give a shout out to um, Ernestine Robinson, who uh, spearheaded the, uh, the Juneteenth Festival in Buffalo. Um, I've been told that she passed away at a very young age. And um, I also wanted to mention um, other activists like Gloria Rubach in Houston, Texas, who was having a contingent on the Juneteenth float in Texas, I believe, in Houston. Thanks. Right? Okay. So um, that's all I have to say. And basically, um, I am going down there this weekend to help out. And I also wanted to um, say that I'm very uh, thankful and I'm kind of excited because I'm also going to the UNAC convention on, on Sunday. And um, I didn't think that was I didn't think that was going to happen because I had asked her, and she said, "Oh no, Sahai, it's not going to happen. You know, we're too busy." But then I just found out there's, she's going to have Sunday off, so we're going to be able to go over to the UNAC co uh, coalition and participate in that. So I'm very excited, and I'm also just really excited to be going to the beach. Um, I do I do anticipate there are going to be a couple of days when I'm just going to be laying flat out, looking at the Chesapeake Bay, just chilling. So I'm looking for that flow to that as well. So thank you guys, and thank you so much for listening. All right.